We are officially live on YouTube for the JWB Rental Income Property of the Week, 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 Week. I'm your host, Greg Cohen. Uh, I'm joined by Madison the Magnificent, our community manager. Say hello, Madison. Hello, everybody. And uh, we're joined by all of you as well. We are hoping to be joined by our, our esteemed guest investor, Rich Ritchie. Rich, I know you're in the audience there. I'm hoping that you can figure out how to jump in as a panelist here. But you know what? The show must go on, and we have an incredible property of the week to, to go through. So we're going to do that. Um, as I mentioned here, um, we are a live show, and we have this incredible community. So for all of you, if you're listening on the podcast, we are so happy that you are listening to us. And if you're on YouTube or if you're on Facebook, we're so happy that you're here. But we got to tell you, there's a better way to be a part of this community. And it's to join us live in the Zoom meeting that we hold every Tuesday and Thursday. You can go and just get a link to register for free by going to nyais.com, nyais.com. And you can join the party here. We've got over 40 folks here now joining us live. And we love and appreciate all of you. And one of the ways that we show our love and appreciation for all of you is to go through, what are we going to call it, Madison? The roll call. Oh, that's right. Sorry, baby. I was trying to get rich on here. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know that I was going to involve you so much. We didn't do that in the pre-show production meeting, did we? No, but I'm, I should be used to just getting thrown into things at this point. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's see how, how great I can do. I can tell you last night as I was thinking about my day, Today, I was like, you know what? The most stressful thing is, can I live up to the standard of the roll call? And I don't know, but I appreciate all of you for joining in here. We're going to start off with Denny Davis, say, Denny Davis saying, Guten Tag from Germany. Den Denny, it is incredible. It is incredible to have you here. So thank you so much. We've got John Henning, our leadoff hitter, batting second today. We've got Lee Bishop saying hello. Uh, the MVP of the Not Your Average Investor show. We've got the fairy godmother who just celebrated a birthday recently. Jen Phil's and checking in saying hello. We've got David Blattner saying hello. Let's see who else we got here. Man, you guys are active here. Lewis Hudnall from the place that Pablo loves to mispronounce the most in the entire world, Milipitas. Lewis Hudnall, great to have you here. We've got Aaron O'Neill into the light. Aaron O'Neill is one of those folks who was consuming the show, didn't really say hello for a while. She came to a live event here in the Not Your Average Investor community. And now she says hi every time. Aaron, it's so nice to have you. Oh, one more thing, Aaron. Your Pats, they beat my Steelers last week. I'm a little bummed yeah, about that. I'm expecting to hear from you, Aaron. We got Hervé Francois from New Jersey saying hello. We got Raj Bantu. Hello, Raj. We've got, oh boy, Everett Shapiro, Pop Pop. Say hello. Nice to see you, Pop Pop. We've got the man that everybody knows his name. It's Noah Randari. We've got Peter James from the esteemed Commonwealth of Virginia. Tip of the cap to you, Peter. Nice to see you, my friend. We've got John Evans saying hello all. We've got Ken Moline, the patriarch, and hopefully the matriarch is with him as well. Carolyn Moline of the first family of the Not Your Average Investor Show. We salute you. Uh, we have uh, Jeff saying hello from uh, Yosemite, California. Great to have you. Rosalind Riley, returning Rosalind Riley, saying hello here each and every single week. We appreciate you. We've got the ringmaster, Andrew Barnhill, saying hello. Wouldn't be the, sh the same show without you. We've got a few few first names here. We've got Joshua saying hello. Joshua, you're, you're saying hello to just the hosts and panelists. If I can invite you to be a part of the bigger chat, you just have to click um, chat to all instead of just hosts and panelists. So hopefully you get to join the, the party here. We've got Leo Faraganen. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 well done, Madison. Well done, Leo. We are, we are excited to have you. You guys are crushing it here in the roll call. Here. We've got Greg Stone, the much better version of Greg here. Howdy from New Jersey. It's great to have you here. And man, I just appreciate all the love and support here that uh, you all are, are, uh, are, are, uh, are giving us. You know, we're trying to hold it down for Pablo. So with that being said, we are just going to go right into the property of the week here. Oh, you know what? I almost forgot the best part of the show, Madison. Can you believe that? All right. I was going to let you roll with it. But. Well, there's no way that I'm going to roll without Madison shares good news. Madison, take it away. All right, everybody. So got some pretty cool news. Also, some kind of also works as a JWB update. Um, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but two of different sections of JWB have been named um, the fastest growing companies in 2022. 
Um, not only are the fastest growing companies, but we are top 50. So um, JW Real Estate Capital is came in at number 43. Super cool. And property management came in at 38. But that's not all the good news I have for you. Um, I know a little while back, my good news was that JWB was named by Jacksonville Business Journal as one of the best places to work in the First Coast. Well, Florida Trends also named JWB as one of the best places to work. So two different mentions, fastest companies, and two different mentions for best company to work for. And I honestly, it's no shock to me whatsoever. So that's like a what's a quadruple dose of good news yeah. there there's so much good news there i don't even know how we so fit much. it in right there yeah um I, that's incredible i mean how many years in a row have we won fastest growing companies madison 11 11 years in a row it's tough to win one of these awards one year maybe two years especially for fastest growing it's based on percentage growth i don't think there's another company in jacksonville that's won it 11 years in a row nope. um so we're super excited to be able to be honored for both uh, uh, two of our departments here, JWB Property Management, JWB Real Estate Capital, an incredible team win. Thank you all for the love and support and, and everything that you guys are saying here in the chat. Um, we appreciate we appreciate all of you. Madison, we appreciate you. Thank you so much for Madison Shares Good News. So I'm going to talk a little bit about Rich uh, while he is connecting the audio here and hopefully he can join in a second now. Uh, but Rich Ritchie is one of my favorite people in the world. Rich has been a friend for decades now. Rich was here as a part of JWB, as a part of helping us figure out how to put this vertically integrated company together 17 years ago. So Rich uh, is a friend of mine. We hang out together every Sunday. We play spike ball together for, for fans of the show. You guys know we talk a lot about spike ball. Rich is my spike ball partner when I can get him, when I can snag him before he gets taken. Rich is a client of JWB. He owns seven rental properties here. So he knows JWB intimately, not only as, you know, a friend of uh, the owners of JWB was there on the ground floor. He's also a client and has listened to this show and taken the advice of this show and has done amazing things with his rental property portfolios, acquired seven properties since 2020. And uh, when he's not just crushing it as an incredible real estate investor, he is crushing it at Truist. He is the vice president at truest and so an incredible lending partner and individual who can shed a lot of light so for all of you when we bring guests on like rich this is just an opportunity to pick his brain many of you are in the same position as rich many of you are thinking about becoming somebody like rich and so you have this incredible opportunity to hopefully ask rich and you know what if he doesn't show up live we'll take all of your questions i'll do the best that i can and then we'll make sure that we get rich here on a show very quickly but without further ado, we're going to jump into the property of the week. For any of you who have uh, questions, I'm going to need your questions today. Let's just be honest, right? Rich, we're having technical difficulties. He can't be here. This is a great time for you guys for you guys to send questions in. I'm really not able to take a look at the chat because we got so many things going on. Masson's going to help there. The chat is an incredible resource. But if you have questions, I would love for this to turn into kind of an ask me anything or a a question and answer session to make sure that we get the most value out of this call for everybody on the call here. So help me help you guys. Let's continue to, um, you know, of course, lean into questions. And I'm going to share the screen here in just a moment. We are going to magically whisk away here. Boom. We have the JWB Rental Income Property of the Week, 4551 Firestone Road here on the west side of Jacksonville. For those who are listening on the podcast, I'm going to read out some of the details for you. I've also added something special, special here for those who are joining live on Zoom when you can actually see what we're looking at. We're going to take a little virtual tour of the property here at, at Firestone Road. But this home has an estimated return on investment of 12.6%. That means your money is working for you at a clip of 12.6% per year, each and every year. Again, compare that to what you may be experiencing, that roller coaster in the stock market or bonds, which are not keeping up with inflation. And think about an asset here that you can own, you can enjoy the experience of owning it and it can earn 12.6% per year for you. This is a brand new construction home as well. Uh, the purchase price is $280,000. 
right? We are focusing on workforce housing neighborhoods. So those neighborhoods that are below middle income and below the median house price, the median house price in Jacksonville is about $365,000. So 280,000 is right where we want to be. Uh, monthly rent of 1791. And as I mentioned, this is already rented. It is on a two-year lease. As I start to identify some of the things that I absolutely love about this property, the fact that it's brand new construction, the fact that it is already rented, um, those are things that decrease maintenance and vacancy costs, right? And that's the biggest opportunity for a a uh, property manager to deliver a return on investment for you. So you've got those things right in place for you. Something else that I really love about this property and we don't talk enough about is, you know, for many of you who are on the show here um, and tune in every single week and thank you all of you, I can see the questions and answers coming in. I'm going to get to those in just a minute here. You know, we talk about long-term leases. If you're out and about and you're in a real estate invest networking group and you talk about long-term leases, you might hear somebody chime in and say, yeah, but what about rent escalations? Aren't you giving up potential rent that you could be, you know, earning if you, if you sign a long-term lease? And the answer is no. You can get long-term leases with built-in rent escalations. That's what this home has. That's what every home that we rent at JWB has. And so I wanted to focus on that because that's absolutely some of the things that, one of the things that I absolutely love about this property it comes with a rent escalation in year two. So the rent on this home goes up $75 in year two, which is happening in July of next year, 2023. So the client who acquires this home, not only do they get to earn that 12.6% return but that continues to go up. The rent continues to go up in future years, which is really, really important. Four beds, two baths, 1,456 square feet, very normal for our type of uh, workforce housing that we wanna be investing in. And of course, here's something really cool. It's completed. For any of you who are reading articles about the real estate industry nationwide, right? There's an undersupply of housing still and construction is taking a long time. So many folks who, um, you know, do actually get the opportunity to buy a turnkey rental property. You have to put down a deposit and you have to wait for it to be built. Maybe six months, nine months, a year. You don't have to wait. You don't have to wait. JWB has that inventory. And so the construction class status is completed. And uh, the leasing status is already rented. The annual appreciation rate is 4.6% per year. And I see my friend, Rich, jumping in here. Rich, are you there, brother? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Let me stop oh, the, the screen geez. here because you have overcome an incredible <laughs> amount to be here, brother. I'm so excited. I don't know if I've ever been this excited to see you. I tried um, three different computers and now I'm on my phone. So <laughs> it worked you know out. What? This, is, this is why you're successful, brother. You are not going to be denied. You are not going to leave Madison and me and the entire community hanging so nice to see you, my friend. God, I, I felt like I was. I could see you on the screen. I couldn't hear anything, and I, I just felt terrible. It's good to be here. I'm, well, I'm sorry so for the delay. Oh, brother, it's, it happens. You know, you know, I was thinking about this in advance. And I'm like, all right, how can I have all this prepared in advance? Because I know something's going to go wrong when Pablo's not here, right? He's probably watching it like, oh, Greg, you know what? I set such a high standard and you go and you screw it up. And then, you know, of course, like three or four things happen. But we are so excited to have you, man. Did you hear some of the some of the things that I talked about in the background for you? Because I was telling I'm about not, not, not really. And the, the only thing I, I was focused on the fact that I didn't get to say week, 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 week after, <laughs> you know, the property of the week. I was very sad about that. Um, we prepped. For I that. also I also, you know, was going to introduce you as being groundbreaking and courageous. Greg Cohen, you know, I don't know if Pablo's used that one yet. Goodness. But, no, he hasn't. See? Gosh, you are so much. You are so um, you're so missed. I think we have a resident spot for you. <laughs> I'll never fill his shoes, but you know, I, I have some things. <laughs> well, cool, man. Well, I was giving him just a little brief overview of um, what you have meant to me as a friend, right? On the spike ball court, um, as a JWB client, how you were there in the very beginning of JWB. And, you know, you saw what it was like for a few guys that's literally trying to figure stuff out. And you've just been with us every step along the way. So, you know, this business more intimately than most, for sure. Um, and you have just been on this incredible run over the last especially the last few years here, I've acquired seven properties. Is it, is it seven properties now that we're up to? So we have, so Daybreak was my first house uh -huh. um, in, that you guys also right. manage. So I have eight, eight long-term rentals and two short-term. 
So you've acquired seven JWB turnkey rental properties. Correct. You also had another home that you have JWB managed for a total of eight. In addition, you've been able to acquire short, two short-term rental properties. Is that right? Yep. Yep. And this is all really in the last two, three years or so, four years. Well, yeah. other than the yeah, well, house. Yeah. I, I mean, I can go through the, the, uh, the history of it when you're ready, but yeah, well, most of it's past two, three years. Well, we're going to jump into that. I mean, if you can just kind of give people, you know, just tell them about your investing journey. And, you know, I know the last two, three years were so critical for you. And I feel like there was an aha moment. I remember when you were on the show, you know, about two, two, two and a half years ago, and um, you just really hit the ground running and kicked it into high gear after that point. Can you tell people about your investing journey, maybe before that, what you yeah. saw yeah. and then what you've done since then? So 2007 is when I bought my first house. Um, and then immediately after that is when, you know, the, the real estate market collapsed. Um, so it wasn't the best time to buy, but like all things, if you, if you hold on to it, you know, now I'm in a good spot, right? There you go. Full market so, cycle, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, people talk about how, you know, terrible it was to buy during that time. Well, I, you know, as, as, holding it as long as we have, we're, we're in a really, really good spot with that, that property. So 2007, we bought that as our primary residence. Um, and then uh 2015 is when we we had a two-year-old daughter at the time and found out we were having twin boys so <laughs> the first person we called was our realtor we're like dude we need a bigger house like let's go so um we we immediately actually the next day after we found out we were having twins we put an offer and and got under contract on on the house we're in now mm -hmm. um so that first house we bought, we turned into a rental, um, not only by necessity, because we had no equity at all. We were way upside right. down. But I'm also, I, I'm a hoarder. I buy, buy and hold. I can't sell things. I can't yeah. let go. So I don't think I was going to sell it anyway. Right. Um, but um, we made the mistake in the beginning of trying to manage that property on our own. Right. Um, you know, we were young and we we're trying to save a little money and it was a nightmare. Like, it, I'm not going to go into the details, but it was terrible. Mm -hmm. Um, so right after we got that renter out, we said, okay, GWB, <laughs> please help. <laughs> so we gave you guys that house. So from 2015 to 2018, we really didn't do anything. We were just kind of, you know, holding and, and then we bought a condo you know, Atlantic beach at Ahern. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, we left, leveraged our, um, took out a HELOC on our current home and, you know, bought that. And then 2020, it, it, it was always one of those things because, you know, I, we had been friends since 2006. Um, I did your first mortgages ever. I always like to talk about that. Absolutely. Um, man. You remember and, when we used to put that stand up right outside SunTrust back in the day? We would put the stand and, up. In Walmart. Like, yeah, in Walmart. We we had these crazy ideas, man. Those were yeah, you, yeah. man, it was those were the good old days. Yes, they were. But you guys were always, you know, hey man, like you never pressured me or anything, but you're like, hey, when are you guys gonna buy a house? You know, let's go. And it was always one of those things where it wasn't the perfect time, you know, and, yep. and then housing values went up and I feel like I missed the boat. And then 2020, um, early 2020, I'm like, I, I was talking it over with Whitney and I'm like, I, we don't care if the prices are a little bit higher now. Like if we don't buy it, buy it, we can't buy it, you know, at the perfect time, we just have to do it. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm a planner, you know, I like to have everything, you know, I, there needs to be a rhyme or reason to, to what I do financially. Mm -hmm. And I had no idea, like how many houses do I buy? Like, what do I do? So that's mm -hmm. when I reached out to you and I'm like, Greg, uh, can we talk? Like, <laughs> and we just kind of went through like what my goals were, um, you know, our goals were not so much to increase our income now. Um, but to plan for retirement and at the same time, create, you know, wealth 
you know, that generational wealth that you can, you know, pass on to your, your kids. Um, so you kind of went over like, uh, how to figure out how many to buy. Right? right. And, and it's all about diversification. You don't want to have all your eggs in one basket. You want to have, you know, a good amount of, of assets, you know, spread out. Um, so I got my, you know, my financial journal and I wrote through and I, we kept track, I kept track of where all my money was and I came up with eight. Um, so I was like, all right, Greg, eight, I need eight yep. houses. Let's go. I remember that phone call. It was incredible. Yes. yes. So, um, 2020, I went under contract on the first house and right after we went under contract is when COVID hit mm -hmm. and at the time, like nobody knew what was going to happen. Is this going to be another away? Is this going to be, you know, what are we, what are we getting ourselves into? And I remember talking to you and you're like, look, man, like you have 90 days to close on this loan. Like, let's just, let's just take a wait and see approach and see what happens. Mm -hmm. um, so fast forward, rates just fall. We're in the threes for investment properties. And I'm like, okay, like now, you know, this is the perfect time. So let's go. Mm -hmm. um, so we closed that loan. And in 2020, I just, you know, every time I closed the loan, I'd reach out to, you know, you guys and say, what's next? Like send me the spreadsheet. Let's go. Every, every time um, I would look at the new homes that are under contract for the week, it was like, it was the rich and Whitney Ritchie show. Like every single yeah. week, right? It was either in contract, like to close or just newly under contract. I was like, you guys just take a residence here. You're just right on that report every single week. Right, right. And, it, and it's just, and then right after that, you know, I bought, you know, I don't, you'll, sh I guess you'll show, you know, the breakdown of the actual houses that we, we, we bought a bunch in 2020 and then a couple in 21 and then our last one in, in 22. And in 22, we sold that condo that I bought mm -hmm. and did a 1031 and bought a JWB house and then those two short-term rentals. Oh, cool. I didn't know that. That was a 1031 yeah. exchange. Very yep. cool. So yep. for anybody in the audience, if you have questions about a 1031, why would you do it? What can it do for you? This is your time right now. And it's funny. I, I, I see, you know, this is, of course, Rich. Madison, we still have him named as Madison. So for anybody yeah. confused out there, this is just Rich, right? It's just Rich. So reach out, you know, let, uh, we'll put a, a question here in the question and answer. 1031s might be a great topic to talk about. Um, Rich, you, you talked about a lot about a lot there that I think is really noteworthy, right? I think in 2018, 2019, 2020, um, even before COVID hit, the vibe was like, well, geez, the market's already gone up like eight, 9% a year for the last decade. I missed the boat. I missed the boat. I missed the boat. And right. you looked at that and you just said, listen, this isn't about short-term pricing, right? You know, the market is what it is, but I'm seeing an opportunity to build generational wealth, right? And we had that right. discussion about how do you take this concept of generational wealth and break it down into the right number of rental properties? And you right. just took this fresh approach. And now look at it, seven years later, you're able... I mean, uh, seven new additional properties later, plus the two additional properties, the short-term rentals that you purchased, and you've been able to lock up those uh, properties at such low interest rates. I mean, there's not a better thing you could do for generational wealth, especially over the last couple of years, than the plan that you put into place, brother. So congratulations, man. Absolutely. I, thank you. Um, but Whitney and I talk about this all the time, though. Like, we we are both we know more about real estate than most, right? Mm -hmm. We're, we're not like, we're very passive when it comes to investing, but we're both real estate adjacent. I do mortgage. She does insurance, but if it wasn't for you guys, there is zero chance that I would have bought those houses like hundred percent because not only do I not have the time because we both have full-time jobs. Um, but I also don't have the capital to make mistakes, right? You guys talk about this all the time. You guys have so much, you know, capital that if you buy wrong, which you don't usually do, right? But if you <laughs> did buy wrong, you can absorb it. Yeah. Like a regular couple like us, like if I, I don't have the capacity to 
plan rehabs and construction and right. all this stuff. Like, so, you know, you talk about this all the time, but there is a cheaper way that you could invest in real estate. Right. But I don't have the time for that. And in this, I mean, when I say it's easy, like, I'm not just saying that because you're my friend. Like, if you were my friend and this was hard, I would not say that it's easy. Yeah, you it, wouldn't have come like, back seven more times. I mean, literally, like, we cut, go under contract, get a mortgage, close, and there's already a renter in it for two years. And, and the, the, whole, the whole thing is to get enough, right, to get enough rental properties so that if there is something that goes wrong, you know, you have that $3,000, $4,000 AC you have to buy or whatever, it's absorbed by your other, your other income that you're making. Yep. So the way that I kind of look at it is those eight properties that I have, that's my base salary, right? Yeah. Like that is the base salary. And that is what allows us to take risk on other things like short-term rentals. Mm -hmm. I would never go out and buy a short-term rental without that base salary, mm -hmm. there's a, you can make a lot of money in short-term rentals, but there's also a lot of risk, yeah. right? So having that base salary. And then of course, also we've, we've always, um, we've always lent, we've always been pr done private lending with you guys mm -hmm. um, since the very beginning. I don't know, like 08 or something like that. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that is also a, a, a monthly check that goes into my, you know, real estate account you know, just as a buffer, you know? Yep. So you, you, you talked about how diversification is key. And many people think like diversification has to be, well, I have to be in stocks, bonds, mutual funds, you know, real estate and all of that. I, there are so many ways to diversify even within real estate. And you're a great example of that, right? You've got your consistency. You've got the, the thing that, you know, every single month is going to perform for you, which is rental property invest, long-term holds, rental property right. investments, right? Then you've got something which might be a little bit higher of an upside, maybe, as far as rental income, which is short-term rentals, right? right. But, but it has a little more risk because there's more potential for vacancy because it is short-term, right? So you're able to take some risks there because you have that. And you've talked about private lending. Those are three great ways to diversify within real estate, right? So just a really cool concept there. Rich, we've got a ton of questions. Our community is really rallying around me. They could see that I was I was hurting in the beginning because <laughs> I didn't know where we were going with the show. And it's just the, the beauty of our community. So they they are firing in a ton of questions. And I want to make sure we have enough time for that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, we're gonna go into the property of the week. I would love, Rich, for you to take a look at this and with your extensive experience, talk about some of the things that jump out to you, because I think it will help others relate to it as well. And then we're going to jump into your client journey so I can do a deep dive. And you haven't seen this yet. Um, you haven't even seen it in our client reporting yet. So I'm going to walk you through uh, your best performing property, your worst performing JWB property. And we're going to take a look at what your overall return on investment has been uh, since inception. Okay, brother? Sounds good. All right, man. So here's the, uh, the JWB rental income property of the... Week, 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 week. <laughs> so there you go, brother. I couldn't leave you out. Um, so this is this one on Firestone Road. This is on the west side, brand new construction, 12.6% estimated returns on investment here and uh, purchase price of 280,000. It's already rented with a two-year lease in place. And the rent on that one is 1791 a month. Um, this one's of course completed and already rented out. Oh, and you know what? I, I, uh, I promised a little virtual tour, Rich. All right. So things like this are what you should uh, require from your property manager. These are 3D tours. Now folks can go on Zillow or Trulia or any of these um, you know, websites to be able to rent a home. They come here and they can just take a look. You can see what this home looks like. You can see what the road looks like, right? Um, you can go inside the home and see, let's see, we've got the entranceway here. I can literally walk from the great room, you know, into the great room, into the backyard. We've got, uh, let's see here, entrance. What else? Kitchen here. Um, you can see the quality of the um, countertops. We have granite countertops in a rental property, right? Things that you don't normally get. We do these things because it is an additional cost to JWB. It doesn't go to our owners. It's an additional cost to JWB. We don't have to do it. But things like this, 
equate into higher rents and they equate into lower maintenance costs. And so, yeah, if you can just put yourself in the shoes of a potential resident here, now you have the opportunity to see this home. You actually go and you you schedule a self-assisted showing. You don't have to actually go and meet anybody from JWB. You put your information in, we verify your ID and all this good stuff. And then you actually get to rent the home. So um, I don't know if anybody's seen that yet, but that's one of the, the ways that we make the magic happen with all those all those homes that are rented. But Rich, I want to get your opinion. I'm going to bring this, this uh, property of the week back up here. What's the first thing that jumps out to you in, in your investing mindset here? 12.6. How about that, huh? That's awesome. Yeah, man. You know, I just think, I don't think that gets enough love. I'm really glad that you noticed that right off the bat. I don't think that gets enough love. When we're looking at what's going on in the stock market and the S&P is down 20% this year in a bear market, like lost 20% of value, right? And you're looking at bonds. Bonds are making like 4% now, which is up from what they were. They, they were at 1% for a long time. Now they're at a whopping 4%. When inflation is 8%, and you're only earning 4% on your money, you're losing, you're losing money. You're not losing as much as if you were in the stock market, but you're losing money. You got to search for investments that have a low degree of risk that can beat inflation. Low degree of risk that can beat inflation. Those are hard to find right now. And this is one of them. Especially right now with inflation only going up. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's rough out there for sure. Yep. So, well, good. So let's, uh, I think we jump right into your client journey because it's about, it's about 10 after one right now. Rich, can you see uh, you and your lovely wife, uh, Whitney, on the screen here? I can. All right, everybody. So as I mentioned here, this is something special we do for the guest investors who come on board here, right? When, when you're an investor of JWB, you get to see your reporting on a, on a monthly basis, which is looking at your profit centers um, about uh, that, that are focused on your um, positive cash flow, your net rental income, uh, which is positive cash flow, your, your uh, tax savings and your principal pay down. But it is really hard to run an analysis on your property values every single month. We don't have the capability to do that every single month with our reporting right now. And so for each one of these guest uh, investors that come on board and for Rich today, I actually break down and look at what his property values are so I can see what home price appreciation he's earned. I also take into account any costs that would come along the way to determine a true return on investment, how hard his money has worked for him since he started to invest in 2020. So we're going to jump into it. Okay, brother? Yeah. I didn't, right. I didn't know you were going to do this. This is exciting. Yeah, man. You're going to be really excited when you see how your returns are, are looking at. Um, <laughs> so I'm just curious, like if you had to guess, like what, what do you think your portfolio is returning for you? Zero idea. <laughs> you just know it's good huh yeah i mean uh, <laughs> i just know that i am making more than i'm paying out there you which go is, which is all i care about at this point and that's the vast majority of our investors you just get you know you know that it's working that's a fantastic thing but it's also nice for for me or for my team to be able to say okay let me show you just numerically how much you're kicking butt so that's what we're going to do here um, so Rich started out and Rich and Whitney, of course, uh, a tag team duo here started out, um, just investing in, and I'm only going to focus on the turnkey rental properties with JWB for, for this segment here, but you can see these seven purchases starting in 2020. Um, and you can see it was just rapid fire in May, uh, August, September, December of 2020, and just continuing January of 2021, February of 2022 and June of 2022. This is an example of somebody who, who. Uh, was intentional, who reached out to experts in his network, right? Was intentional about his goals and then took action in an incredible, an incredible rate. And you guys are going to see the fruits of all of that labor. So congratulations on, on putting this together, my friend. Yeah. And the, the other thing I want to mention real quick is for folks that, um, you know, are, are married or have a significant other, um, what we did, Whitney and I, is all of these mortgages were just in my name. Um, so all of these, you know, uh, long-term rentals were in my name um, to maximize the amount of purchases that we could do. And then these last, these two short-term rentals, Whitney um, put them in her name. Um, so speaking of being intentional, that 
that is, uh, you know, very important if you're trying to, you know, purchase as many properties as you can. That nugget right there could save people literally hundreds of thousands of dollars right there over the full market cycle for your rental property portfolio. What Rich is talking about there. If you didn't get that specifically, reach out to my team. We can walk you through how important it is to be intentional about who you put on the loan when you're buying your rental properties. Incredibly important there. So, all right, we're going to take a look at the highest return on investment here. This is the, the, the breadwinner out of your seven JWB turnkey properties here. Now, keep in mind, this does not include home price appreciation, but we're looking at the house here at 8787 Coco Avenue. And uh, when you purchase that home, your expected returns were just about 10% to earn on your money, including everything, including home price appreciation. And we've been able to perform at an annualized lifetime clip of just under 22% returns each and every year. How cool is that, brother? It's amazing. So as you I, imagine, have two, I have two cocos, so odds are it was going to be a cocoa, I guess. <laughs> well, I know you have really invested heavily in one neighborhood, which is yeah. the Arlington neighborhood. And yep. I thought that was worthy of talking about because, you know, a common question is, well, Greg, if I get one in Arlington, shouldn't I get one on the west side or shouldn't I get one in the south side? You looked at one and you just said, hey, listen, this is the best property that's available. And I'm going to, I'm going to purchase it and happen to be all in the same neighborhood. Did you have any fears or trepidation about buying too many in one neighborhood? No, I, I, I believe in Arlington. Um, and I know you guys too do too. You, you know, you did the mural and you've done all sorts of, you know, yeah. cool stuff in the area and it's up and coming. And um, that's just, it's pretty close to where my first house was. It's just a place that I, you know, definitely believe in. Um, our last, pro our last property we bought is in Murray Hill, though, which I saw I, that, which, which I'm pretty excited about. And we were yeah. driving to Avondale, and Whitney let me know that we were driving through Murray Hill, and I had no idea at the time. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing when you own real estate and you're like, I didn't even, I didn't even know where that is. It's in my own city, and I didn't know where that is. <laughs> yes, yes. So yeah. But um, I, I took that to heart when you guys call these, you know, houses widgets. Yeah, we, we took that to heart. It's, it's all about, you know, putting together a portfolio. Absolutely. All right. So let's take a look at the lowest performer here. And um, I'm just going to caution you. you. Just take a deep breath here, Rich. Just make sure you're sitting down. Okay. Because for your lowest performer, again, not including home price appreciation, you're performing at an 18% return. And your expected returns were 10.42%. Can, can you handle that one, Rich? I can, man. Let's go. <laughs> this one, curious, is right down the street from Coco. So in the oh, yeah. same neighborhood here, right? Um, yep. As we were just talking about on Free Avenue. The, the way that we've done this for Rich is by following this model, which is the same model we follow for all of you out there. We buy in our core neighborhoods. Arlington happens to be one of them. We sign long-term leases. We treat those residents like gold. We renew those residents and they stay in your homes a long time. And you're in a growth market and one that JWB invests in ourselves. And so you're able to see higher growth than the average investor in Jacksonville. In fact, Rich, I don't know if you know this, but we ran the numbers on it. And JWB clients have earned 79% more home price appreciation than the average Jacksonville investor since 2013. Is that pretty cool? Nice. Yeah. yeah. You're one of them, brother. <laughs> All right, so let's take a look at the numbers here. So again, I run the entire portfolio. I look at all five profit centers, and this is from 2020 until today. So net rental income, Rich, you and Whitney and your family have earned just about $56,000 in net rental income directly in your bank account. In addition to that, you've earned $6,000 of tax savings, taxes you don't have to pay because you invest in this asset class. Principal pay down means that your residents are paying down the loans for you each and every single month. 20, almost $23,000 of loans have been paid down by your residents. And then here's the big one, right? Home price appreciation. In just, geez, two and a half or so years, you and Whitney and your family have earned $300,000 in home price appreciation for your portfolio, brother. Congratulations, my man. No, this is, this is amazing to see you know, just to see it on paper. I mean, you know, you know, hypothetically what it, what it's going to look like, but this is, this is very cool. Yep. Well, for your entire portfolio, 
Uh, if you take all of the weighted averages of the expected returns, you are expecting about a 10.1% return on investment when you decide to invest. And when you look at all of these profit centers, and I also take away any cost that would come along with selling these properties, things of that nature, right? Um, your actual return on investment is 40.3% each year. That is not a total number. That means every year your money is earning 40% for you in an environment where in the stock market, people are losing 20% right now. You are earning 40.3%, my friend. Just uh, couldn't be happier for you, for your family. It means something extra special when it's one of my best friends. And so, man, I'm just, I'm excited yeah. for you, brother. Uh, I mean, I, again, man, I don't, I don't want to make this a, a love fest, but we could not and would not have done it without, without you guys. So um, just make it so easy for, for true passive investing. There's a lot of people that listen to our message and do nothing. There's right. a lot of friends and family members that I have who listen <laughs> to my message and still do nothing, right? You're special, right? You guys are special. You did something about it. And, um, and you're enjoying the, the fruits of that, those decisions here. One special thing that I wanted to bring up, and it's just at the bottom here. This isn't something that I think I've ever shared on the show, but I've been really dr drilling into the numbers here for our entire client portfolio. As you know, we manage over $750 million in real estate assets. We manage over 4,700 single family rental properties. Over 2,700 properties have been purchased by our clients since 2006, turnkey properties, just like Rich and Whitney here. If you run the numbers, 100% of JWB clients are currently hitting their return expectations. 100% of the time. That, I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not that great at math, but that sounds like a good number. <laughs> you know, and it's not like nothing's changed over the last 17 years. We've had a pandemic, we've had ups, things have gone sideways, but this asset class performs so well, especially when you buy and hold, because it's a critical need for, for the resident. It's a critical need for the government to make sure that it's working well. And this should be something that you include in your property portfolio. All right, Rich, we've got this incredible network here that is firing in. I'm looking at 12 questions. So let's just jump through these questions here. Again, I appreciate every single one of you for, for helping us in this call. And let's see if we can, we can knock some of these out. Might take some rapid fire here, but let's see what we got. So Raj Bantu asks, mortgage rates spiked to around 6.5%. What could be the impact of higher mortgage rates on the rental market? I can take that one, Rich, if you have an idea. Do you want to go into that? I mean, you, you can start. Okay. So this is really critical. And Raj, I'm glad that you brought this up because I went into this diatribe on this last Thursday. And what, uh, what is really interesting here is that the Fed, of course, is raising interest rates to kind of, you know, quell the housing market, to normalize the housing market. But overall, when you do that, right, when you raise interest rates, you take buyer demand out of the equation and people got to live somewhere. So it's pushing all this demand into the renting market. And so you are still going to see rents continue to rise and do a lot of research. We pay for a lot of consulting and our consultants in this research and most articles around there are still expecting rents to continue to go up. And it's mainly because of this phenomenon, right? This increased demand on the rental side, as well as the fact that we still have an undersupply of housing. So mortgage rates spiking to six and a half percent is actually continuing to drive rental demand, which is great for everybody on this call who owns, who owns those hard assets. Um, yeah, the, the I think it's something like 18% of home home purchases are still by investors right now. Um, and like you said, you know, people are talking about how, you know, the market's changed and there's still no supply out there, you know, and, and, you know, how are you going to find these properties unless you really have an in in the market? And that's another thing, like, I wouldn't be able to find these properties, you know, like yep. you guys have all sorts of, you know, interwebs out there, you know, where you get your, your leads and, and all sorts of things that the normal person, you know, doesn't have access to. You know, if you're doing something for 17 years, you might as well, you probably should be good at it, right? You yeah, should probably yeah, have you some should. connections. <laughs> <laughs> so it does help us and it's, it's a great value. And, you know, you're right. There's a lot of different ways that you can buy rental properties. But if you're looking for something that's consistent, that can build generational wealth, if you're time strapped, if you are busy as you are, right? And you know, if you want it to be less risky, 
which you talked about, you can work with a vertically integrated provider. They can make it easy for you, you know, which is exactly how Rich has been able to acquire. He's now 10 properties total. And largely that was done in, the, in a two and a half year span all while he's crushing at his job and his family's doing great. So Jeff Bolton asks, and I think I'll take this one, Rich. Can you talk about why you exclude maintenance and vacancies from the expected cash flow figure? Great question, Jeff. I appreciate the tough questions as well as the, the gimmies, right? Um, so thank you so much for asking that question. You know, when you look at cash flow, you're looking at what happens on a normal monthly basis, right? In a normal month, right? You've got your rent coming in. You've got your uh, mortgage payment that you need to the pay to the bank, your principal, your interest payments, your taxes, your property taxes, your property insurance costs, and you got your property management fees. And the overwhelming majority of the months when you're an owner of JWB rental properties, just like for Rich here, right, are just like that. And so that's what we look at for monthly cash flow numbers, right? There's your positive cash flow. But it's not complete, right? You also need to look at your total return on investment, which is what we talked about for this 12.6% number for, for this home here um, on Firestone. Um, that's where you take into account expected maintenance costs, expected vacancy costs, expected uh, tenant placement fees, closing costs. So you take into account all those costs. You also take into account other uh, profit centers as well. So you take the, the bad things into the return on investment calculation. You take the good things too, like tax savings and principal pay down and home price appreciation and all these good things. So that's where you really kind of get the full picture in that return on investment calculation. So they go hand in hand. And that's why we present it, you know, of course, for a return on investment. That's why we present it, including everything, the good and the bad. Thank you so much for that question. Lee Bishop, MVP of the Not Your Average Investor Community says, Greg, and this might be one for me as well. Greg, there are a lot of times that you say, contact the portfolio manager and they will get you answers. When I call them, they have not heard that you said that you would know a particular thing and it makes them not look so sharp. Is there a way you can make sure that the team gets a copy of the show transcripts now so that they can continue? I uh, can't see where that's going, but I get the gist and I love this type of feedback. Thank you so much, Lee. Um, yeah, absolutely. We can continue to make sure that our team is more in the loop here. We do a tremendous amount of uh, training right? That's why you guys are seeing now our team start to jump into our client only calls as well to really kind of understand the message so they can be the best resource for you all. And, uh, but you know what, that never stops. And so questions like this and suggestions like this are fantastic. I'm, I'm going to take it as a great point of feedback and, and we'll make sure that we continue to get our team up to speed so that there's a congruency of the message. Uh, so thanks so much, Lee. Appreciate it, buddy. Uh, Marilyn Cotterman, She's from Homosassa, Florida. Rich, do you know where, what, uh, a little bit about? Home her? of the manatees. Home of the manatees, baby. Oh, man, it's funny. We had Mark Lamping, the president of the Jags, on the show last, on Tuesday. And uh, Marilyn was there in the, in the crowd. And we said, oh, Marilyn uh, Cotterman, home, uh, you know, Homosassa, Florida. And Mark Lamping knows that Homosassa, Florida is the home of the manatees. Everybody knows it. Well, my, um, my Whitney actually her, um, is from Bradenton, which also has lots of manatees. Ooh, is there like a feud between Homosassa and Bramington? Is, <laughs> yeah, you know, is maybe. <laughs> I think we should start one. <laughs> so Marilyn asks, how long does the mortgage process generally take before you close? Mark, Rich, you want to take this one? The, the loan process? Yeah. I mean, usually 30 days, uh, you know, is typical time frame for be, from beginning to end. Um, and a loan process could take a little bit longer, could, could be quicker. Right now, is a interesting time in the mortgage world. Um, business is a lot slower than what it was in the past couple of years. So um, mortgage companies are gonna be closing quicker um, just because they don't have as, as many loans in the pipeline. So I would, I would just expect about 30 days. You know, that's a good point too. Things are changing in the lending world um, as the economy changes. You know, and I've also, when new clients come on board, I say, listen, if you want a quick closing, get your documents organized, send them in right off the bat. That's how you get to a 30 day close. There are clients that take a little bit longer and maybe you don't have your stuff organized and you know, maybe you don't send in a complete file and that's where it can take closer to 60 days. So I, I think it's largely dependent on the borrower more than anything, but you're right. It should be 30 days, maybe 45 days. And you know, if, if we're all working in unison, then there's certainly no problem there. 
Denny Davies, our friend, longtime client, friend from Germany here says, Greg, are JWV sales still going gangbusters? Are you guys seeing an impact of the rising rates the past few months? By the way, kudos for you nailing the rate, uh, the rate raise timing with your predictions earlier this year. Denny, thank you so much, man. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I've been going back and looking at some of our shows in the past six months, year, two years. I actually went back to the show that we did in March of 2020 to see some of the predictions that we made and how they've turned out. So we're actually going to do a show on those here pretty soon. And one of the ones that we just absolutely nailed was talking about how interest rates are going to spike. Uh, so thanks for, for noticing that. Um, that's something we take pretty seriously. We want to give you guys insider information. Um, and you're asking about JWB sales. Are they still going gangbusters? They're not going as gangbusters as they were a year ago. I can tell you that. I mean, I mean, I was looking at our, our pacing for last year. We were on pace for like 600 houses in a year sold. You know, we, I think we were at points, it was probably 700 house. I mean, we were selling 60 properties a month for a while there. And I mean, and you guys saw, we, we couldn't even keep them in inventory long enough. I mean, it, it was a, that was a interesting time. Um, I don't know if we're going to see that again. So yeah, our sales are not what they were last year. We're going to end up selling somewhere around 400 properties this year, which is right where we want to be. But yeah, you hit the nail on the head. I mean, there's, there, there's a normalization of the real estate market all the way across the board. And you know what? We're happy. <laughs> it's okay that there's a normalization of sales. Selling 600, 700 years yes. for an organization that's built to sell about 400 is we're okay with this. So thank you for the question, my friend. Uh, Ken Maline, the patriarch of the first family of the Not Your Average Investor show says, can you ask Rich to explain why property insurance has jumped higher this year? Oh, wow. <laughs> so um, this could be a whole another webinar and Whitney would probably be the best person to have on the show to do this. Right. But but there is just a lot of things going on in the, the market in Florida um, as it relates to roof claim fraud and and some other legislation that was was passed where you know there's there's some fee multipliers out there that are just essentially long story short these insurance companies are getting destroyed in florida and they're going out of business left and right and there are only you know a handful left to choose from and they are all tightening down because they're losing so much money um, so it's just, it's very difficult um, in Florida specifically. Um, there has been some legislation that was changed that we hope will make a difference in the future, but it's nothing that's going to happen soon. Yep. And that's what we're hearing too, right? This is a problem that started to come online really about a year ago or so, year and a half ago, two years ago. And, in, you know, I'm like you, I own rental properties. So my insurance costs have gone up, but it's specifically on older homes, right? It doesn't right. affect new construction. So that's really important to know. And, right. uh, you know, long-term, we feel like we're in a good spot to get this situation solved. Let's face it, it's solved in every other state. Like right. Florida is just getting crushed with these lawsuits. So it's right. solved in every other state. The legislature is aware of it. It seems to be more of a temporary issue. And then what I also remind people is, listen, if you were affected by this, you probably owned real estate for the last two years. And oh, by the way, real estate went up 20, 25% a year for the last two years. So I think we're all right. okay with that. We're not happy about it. And the important thing is that we saw it for the long haul. Right. All right, my friend. Well, we have some additional questions. I want to say thank you again, Lee, Marilyn, uh, Raj, Jeff, uh, continuing to fire questions. And Ken, thank you all. Thank you all for being on the show here. We're going we're gonna to wrap this up. Um, and um, man, I just want to say thank you to the community. Thank you for being there for me and for Madison and for Rich, especially in the beginning when we didn't know if we were going to have Rich on the call. And uh, <laughs> you, all, you all show your love in so many ways in the chat uh, with firing questions in like this. Uh, you guys, that's what makes this community great. You won't let me fail. And I felt that today. And I really, really appreciate it. Thank you for taking your time here to be on the show. If this is one of the first times you've heard about the show or you're attending or you're listening on the podcast or on YouTube or in Facebook, you're doing a great thing, but there's a better way. You can join us live here. You can feel the love in this community. And to do that, you just uh, just got to get a link. Just go to nyais.com, nyais.com for Not Your Average Investor Show. And then you'll join the party here uh, on the next show. We do it every Tuesday and Thursday. And of course, not, last but not least, Rich, thank you. Thank you for, for overcoming the obstacles, for, <laughs> for pile driving the computer that wouldn't work and just I made it. 
<laughs> making it here, brother. Um, yeah. Thank you for more than that, by the way. Thank you for your trust. Thank you for being a friend for so many years. Thank you for giving me the joy of helping out one of my friends um, to accomplish a really important thing for your families, man. I can just tell you on a personal level, you know, we can, you know, as a, as an expert and an educator, I, I can say is I can scream from the, from the mountaintops and whether people are listening or not, it's not, it's not up to me, but when a friend listens and puts his trust in me and says, listen, this is what I want to do. How do I do this? There's not a greater feeling to see this type of success you've had. So thank you brother for everything. The feeling is mutual, my friend. We, we, we love you guys and shout out to Grammy and pop Pop, best, <laughs> best um, parents out there. And, and my beautiful wife, Whitney, um, love you guys. We love the Shapiro family and the Richie family. You guys are special to every single person here on JWB. Uh, every client has been affected in one way or another by, by your team. So we appreciate you. We appreciate every single one of you for being here. Thank you for helping me get through this without Pablo. We can't wait for him to get back. And if you want to be a successful investor like Rich, don't be average. <laughs>